Hey, what's up, everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And today what we're going to talk about are just some of the bare basics that you need in order to use the DSP module in Juice. So a couple videos ago, I did a state variable filter in which I used the DSP module to be to to use the default state variable filter and do an implementation of that in Juice. But this time what I'd like to do is just kind of break down a real quick video just on some of the essentials that you need in order to use the DSP module itself. So it'll be covering some of the same material that I did for the state variable filter, but it's just going to be the bare essentials that you need. So I've built a default project here. I'm just going to open it up in Xcode. And here we are. So the first thing, we're just going to pull open the API. The reason I'm doing this video is because the DSP module is kind of scattered around the API a little bit. And over these next couple tutorials, I'm going to go through some of the different aspects of the DSP module. Maybe we'll go through this phase one, and I think that there's a wave shaping one. And I've been getting a couple of requests for the infinite impulse response filter, doing an implementation of that as well. So these next couple tutorials, I'll probably do a couple different implementations of stuff within the DSP module. But for this one, I'm just going to cover the very the, the bare essentials of what you need in order to actually implement anything in the DSP module itself. So if I just do a command F and then just do DSP. So the first one that we need is this processor, it's called processor spec. Where is it? Here we go, process spec. So what this does is this actually just delivers some information to the DSP algorithm. So we put this within our prepare to play method here. So if I'm in the right CPP, so here we are on prepare to play. So it's called DSP process spec. Uh, I think I forgot to actually add it to my modules. So I'm just going to have to go back a step here and just actually make sure that I have it in the modules itself. So let's just add it. And we go here, and then we just add this to the modules in our producer. So let's just relaunch an Xcode, and we should be good to go. So we got DSP process, and it should come up now. Process spec. I'm just going to call it spec. Then we have a couple different methods here. I'm actually just going to pull this over so we can see the API and the Xcode at the same time. So. Sorry, I'm just juggling this around a little bit. So, all right, here we are. Just open this up a bit wider. And so we have three different methods that we need to implement here. We have, we need to declare a sample rate, block size, and the number of channels. So we could just do spec dot sample rate equals and then we just have our sample rate here from prepare to play and we can just put sample rate here and then spec dot maximum block size equals samples per block once again that's just from our prepare to play arguments and then we have spec num channels equals get total num output channels. So that's so that's all good. So this is just so we can pass this on to the DSP module. So next thing that we need is we need the actual audio block. So the way that the audio block is actually handled, I'm just going to erase some of this commentary here, just so it makes it a little bit less complicated. Okay, and I'm going to erase all of this. 
Okay, so so the DSP module deals with the audio block in a slightly different way than we are normally dealing with with the audio block iterating through the channels and then iterating through the sample through the sample blocks so the way it it does it is by actually using a data structure that's called audio let me make sure audio block so if we just pull up the api here and it'll tell you what it is so this is a data structure that actually points to our, in this case, it points to our buffer. So we call this audio block of floats, and then we'll just call it block. And then we're just saying that we're pointing this to the buffer. Okay, so this is just, so I don't want to say it's, a co it's not a copy of it, but it's just actually referring to our audio our audio buffer that's here in our process block. Okay. So then, or uh, was it giving us an error? Oh yeah, need to erase this. So the other, the other thing is normally if you're doing, if you're doing one process within the DSP module, then normally that, that type of process that you're doing has its own process method. So I'll, t I'll show you what I mean. So if I go to state uh, variable filter here, and then I do process there, where is it? So I think it's in here. So let's try process. So there's a, there's a process method for each one of these. So, I'm, so I would assume that the infin, infinite impulse response and the DSP reverb, all of those have their own process method. But what if you wanted to do more than one process at once? How would you do that? Well, the way that we do that is by implementing our own process function. So I'm just going to do that by declaring it here in the header file. So I'm just going to call this void process. And then in here, I'm going to put one of these objects called context. In this case, we're going to put a, a process context replacing. So what this means is that we have, basically, we're going to have our audio block. We're going to use the, the process method in order to do something to that block of that that block of audio and then it's going to output through our uh, our audio callback so so what we need to do is we need to for our argument we have DSP process context replacing and this is going to be of type float and then we'll just call this context. And then we can do an implementation here in the file itself. S DSP module skeleton processor uh, process. And then DSP process context replacing and this type float, and then we'll just call it context. And then there, we'll just leave this blank, and I'll say do processing here, and output. So another thing that we need to do, so let's say that we're modifying, we're, we're using a filter, and we're modifying the parameters of that. So we need a way in order for the parameters to update before we do the processing in our audio block. So we also need an update method, which I'm, I'm just keeping this blank, but this is just kind of some skeleton code that, that we can, uh, that we can use, you know, just for doing our own algorithm at, at a later, at a later point. But I just wanted to show you guys just kind of the bare bones stuff of what you need. 
So update parameters. And I'll just copy this for speed. And I'll actually put this just above. So void DS. This one, update parameters. And then here, I'm going to say update your parameters for your processes here. Okay, so that's fine. So we've declared our buffer. And then from, from that point, so basically you would do all of your processing, all of your DSP would happen here, and also your, your, your output would happen here. So all we would need to say here, we don't need to do any sort of iteration through channels or through samples. We would just say process, and then we could say DSP context, process context replacing, float and then what we're going to replace is we're going to replace the block with the processed so basically we we're going to have this audio block that's coming in to our process we're going to do some processing and then it's going to go out and then we're just going to do our output through the through the process method here. So this is a real quick tutorial, and I just thought that I'd uh, go through some of those basics just to make a quicker tutorial on those on those basic things that you need for the DSP module in Juice. So these next couple tutorials, we're going to go through some more of the specific processes that Juice has implemented, such as the reverb and the infinite impulse response filter and go through some of those and talk about the implementation of those. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to give it a like and a subscribe if you've enjoyed it and I will see you next time.